Today, the scripture readings speaks of the compassion and the mercy of God. Incidentally, we also serve a feast of St. Alphonsus, who is known to be a preacher that saved souls, praying for the conversion of sinners, expounding, of course, the mercy and compassion of God. In today's Gospel reading, we have the parable about the Daniel and the wheat. This parable is important for us because those of us who are impatient with the evil in the world, we want to remove evil quickly from this world. And we can be very impatient in the way we want to bring this about. So the parable of Daniel and the wheat is a beautiful parable that explains the mystery of evil at work in the world today. As Jesus explains, the Daniel, the subjects of the evil one, the enemy who sold them, is the devil. And so this coexistence between evil and goodness will be something that we need to contend with until the end of our life. And the struggle continues. And it's important for us that in this struggle, we need to learn patience, even as we try to establish the kingdom of God, even as we try to proclaim truth against falsehood that is being permeated and uh, propagated in the world today. And it is important for us in the sense that how should we deal with this struggle, especially for those who fail to listen to the word of God, those who are against us, those who oppose the truth. Today's the first reading from the book of Exodus is very helpful because Moses too was struggling with his people who has just abandoned the God of the covenant when they worshipped the golden calf. They were ungrateful and we knew that Moses was deeply disappointed at his people. He broke the tablets because of his deep anger. He just simply could not accept the fact that these people, that the Lord had saved them from Egypt, could become so ungrateful in such a short period of time. And so it was in his anger that he wished to punish them. And today in the mountain, God reveals himself and it's very interesting how God revealed himself to Moses to help him to see things in perspective. Remember when God called Moses and Moses asked him, Who are you? He said, I am who I am. That was the answer he gave to Moses. I'm sure, like us all, it was not a very comprehensible answer. I am who I am. It was as if he didn't answer the question. And today, the answer of I am who am is made clear. Who is this I am who am? He is the God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. Faithfulness. God is faithful to us until the end. He does not change. I am who am. In spite of infidelity, he remains faithful. And that is what later on St. Paul would have said the same thing. God will always be faithful to us even when we are unfaithful to him. That is the constancy of God's love. His love never changed. And his desire for us never changed. Even though we might change, he remains committed to us. Although it does not mean to say being committed to us, he will allow us to continue to destroy ourselves. As again in today's first reading, God lets nothing go unchecked, punishing the father's fault in the sons, in the grandsons of the third and fourth generation. Because God wants to save, ultimately, not out of anger, not out of revenge, but simply to save. And this is where the response to the reminds us the Lord is compassion and loved. So again, from this context, when we read today's gospel, 
the parable of the darnel and the wheat. This parable, the Lord invites us again to reflect on the patience and compassion of his father. We would want to make judgment quickly, but God is actually very patient with us. Sometimes we tend to judge people and to condemn them, or even condemn ourselves because we have done the wrong things, because we have been ignorant. But the truth is, as in the parable of the Daniel and the wheat, the Daniel and the wheat, they are almost impossible to distinguish when they are young. Sometimes you walk through the paddy field, you can't tell which is the wheat and which is the grass. I believe that we all want to choose good in life, but sometimes we are ignorant, we are short-sighted. We don't have the full wisdom and all the details, the clarity of making decisions. I mean, that is a fact. We are conditioned by our culture, we are conditioned by our past, we are conditioned by our prejudice, we are conditioned by so many factors, sometimes fear as well. So for us to make a decision clearly, I think only the angels can make. I don't think we can really make. We try, of course. It's important that we try. And so that is why the inability to distinguish between good and evil is the result of a fallen nature. Remember, when we fall into the sin of the original sin, one of the consequences is the loss of the preternatural gifts of infused knowledge. We have a very dull and corrupt intellect. We can't distinguish. That is why people in the world make wrong choices. So God understands. And sometimes it is through our struggles, making mistakes, that we come to know actually it was the wrong mistake. Even for those of us who are good Catholics, supposedly, and we spend time doing all kinds of spiritual discernment, and after we make the discernment, we thought that was what God wants us to do. Actually, I think it was not the right discernment. So, God is compassionate. He allowed us to make mistakes along the way and to discover. That is part and parcel of human growth. And secondly, it also means to say, therefore, that when we pass judgment, we have to be very careful as well. Because when we judge people, perhaps again, we cannot really tell who are the good people and the bad people. Sometimes the bad people turn out to be the good people. Sometimes people can present themselves in a very virtuous manner. And sometimes I tell you, especially in social media, you have to be careful. These scammers and these fellows who are cheaters, they write such beautiful testimony about themselves and you know, they paint themselves as if they are next to Jesus Christ, you know, and we want to believe in them. So these are all the situations. It's hard to tell. So again, we make mistakes on that as well. So along the way, I think it's important for us, we have to get our perspective correct. At the end of the day, it is true, life is a journey, it's a process of growth, making mistakes, learning from mistakes. But of course, we have to be also confident that at the end of the day, God will triumph. You know? God is watching us. At the end, judgment will come. At the end, God will know when to intervene. At the end of the day, the last word will not be evil. The last word would be goodness. And that is our confidence. And so even as we struggle along, as we see so many things happening in the world, sometimes we think the world is going to the docks, you know. But God will have His ways when He will intervene at the right time. At the end of the day, of course, after saying all these things, what we reap is what we sow. We will have to face final judgment. There is no escape. It is inevitable. God, God is waiting for us to repent, waiting for us to change. And so there will be judgment. We cannot escape that. But we know that also, even in that judgment, God will triumph. And it is important, therefore, in our struggle against evil and darkness, we must never give up. We must keep on striving, even though we feel that perhaps today secularism and individualism, they triumph over Christian gospel, and it's not true. So today, let us pray that we might be like Moses. We are told God speaks to him as a friend, face to face. This is so beautiful. We need to contemplate on the goodness, compassion of God. So sometimes it is because we use our reason. Then we look at the world situation and we say, 
there is no hope. We fall into despair. Sometimes we look at our own situations at home, struggling with our children, with our spouse or with our in-laws, and we say to ourselves, there is no hope. But actually, we need to meet God face to face. When we meet God face to face, just like Moses, the face will be radiant. We need to meet God face to face to find hope, to find courage. And the people as well received encouragement whenever they turn to God face to face. So let us pray that we don't just use our intellect to discern, let us use our heart. Let us pray a greater intimacy with the Lord so that we could be assured of His divine assistance.